Can you all hear me okay? Cool. All right. Well, hello. My name is Allison, and I'm a new postdoc here at UK in the Department of Entomology. My research is going to be focusing primarily on how pesticides affect the behavior of honeybees as well as their colony health. But um, I am new, so I don't really have any data yet. So instead, today, I'm going to be talking about why honeybees are a big deal when we're talking about agriculture. Um, so whenever I tell people that I study bees, I always hear, oh, we've got to save the bees. We've got to save the bees. Are you saving the bees? And I'm like, oh, that's a lot of pressure. But you know, I love that. That's great. We do need to care about bees because, as I'm sure you're aware, bees are super important for pollination, especially crop pollination. So much so that in the US alone, bee pollination is worth $14 billion. That's because more than 70 crops depend on bee pollination to some degree or another. So that basically translates to one out of three bites of food that we eat depends on bee pollination. And when we're talking about bees, we're talking about all of the bees that we have here in the US. So there are actually over or roughly 4,000 bee species in North America. You can see just you know representative samples up here. And I don't know about you, but when I heard that, even as someone who studies a bee species, I was surprised that there were so many. And that's because mostly when we think about bees or we think about crop pollination, we're not thinking about all 4,000 bee species, right? We're thinking first and sometimes only about honeybees. And why is that though? Like there are so many bees, all of which are really important for crop pollination. I wanna stress that all bees are important. All bees play a role in pollination services. So why are we so obsessed with honeybees? Why are they such a big deal? And why have we come to rely on them to such a large extent? So the, the easiest way to sum up why is because honeybees are really weird. And I say that with all the love in my heart because I do love honeybees, but they're weird. They have some really unique, unusual sorts of characteristics that most bee species don't have that make them really, really excellent for crop pollination. So the first way that they're weird is that they live in large colonies. Most bees are not actually group living, they're solitary. Even bee species that are living in groups like bumblebees, for example, they have maybe a few hundred individuals usually, but you know, a solid mature honeybee colony like the one in this picture can have easily more than 30,000 individuals. That's huge. And so when we're thinking about crop pollination, even though only you know, a fraction of those 30,000 individuals might be foraging, that still means that from just one colony alone, you can have tons of bees out there collecting resources and then pollinating crops. So they can just basically outnumber, outcompete other bee species when it comes to pollination. Bees are, honeybees, I should say, are also uh, kind of weird in that they're eusocial. And that's just a fancy science way of saying that they have a reproductive division of labor. So you've probably heard, you know, queen bee versus worker bee, and that refers to this division of labor that bees have. So they have, each colony has one queen bee and she lays all of the eggs for the colony. And then most of the rest of the bees in the colony are non-reproductive female workers. And those workers also have an age specific division of labor where different bees will do different tasks based on their age. So the youngest ones do stuff inside the hive and only the oldest ones go out and collect resources. So what this means for crop pollination is that the bees that are going out and foraging and pollinating, that is their only job, that's their only focus. Compare that to most other bee species that don't live in these large groups with really um, structured divisions of labor, those bees have to split their time between a lot of different priorities. So they don't have the same uh, focus and time to devote to foraging and pollinating. So honeybees are also kind of unusual in that they have colonies that live for multiple years. So again, most bees are solitary. So most of the time, the way it goes is they emerge in the spring and they live and reproduce and grow in through the summer, and then they die in the fall. And you know their eggs will overwinter underground to emerge in the spring again. Honeybees, uh, they don't do that. Their colonies can live through the winter because of course they make honey that we benefit from but really the primary reason they make it is to feed on to sustain themselves through the winter. And this need to build up a store of excess food, this honey, means that they really uh, just typify the, the phrase busy as a bee. 
because no matter how much they've already gone out and foraged, no matter how much food they already have, they are going to keep going all day, every day, as long as there are flowers. They will continue to forage and pollinate no matter what. And so that means, again, when we're talking about crop pollination, if you put them in the middle of a large field, they might have already made 100 trips, but they're still going to keep going and keep pollinating. So in addition to these um, kind of unusual parts of their biology that kind of are different than most bee species, they also have a special skill. You've probably heard of their um, ability to communicate, and communication is key, as the saying goes. And they communicate through what's called the waggle dance. And so you can see the video of it here. You see in that white circle, the bee is waggling her body up, and then she turns around. She waggles her body again, and she turns around the other direction. And so this dance that she's doing, different parts of it are communicating different pieces of information. So that most of the information is encoded in that waggling part. So that's called the waggle run. And the length of time that she does that run will relate to the distance that other bees need to fly. So there's a very strict relationship between duration and distance. And so that really helps other bees know um, exactly how far they need to go. Now, the angle at which she does that waggling run, that tells other bees the direction that they need to go. So bees will use the upward direction as a reference point, and that reference point represents the current position of the sun. So a bee that's dancing at a 90 degree angle from up, that means when bees go outside, they need to fly at a 90 degree angle from the current position of the sun. So what this means is through this dance, bees can communicate really specific information to their nest mates. And so that means that they can recruit them if they find a really awesome resource. So let's say a bee finds an amazing patch of flowers, maybe a big crop field that's in bloom. She can go back to her hive and dance. And then all of a sudden, the whole colony will know tons of bees will be there foraging. So what this means is bees can use social information to efficiently find and pollinate resources in a way that species that do not have access to that social information, they just um, can't find and pollinate quite as quickly. So when we're talking about why honeybees have come to be such a big deal for agricultural uh, crop pollination, it's because they're basically like the dream team. They've got the numbers to pollinate large landscapes really rapidly. And they also have the focus and the drive to focus solely on pollinating all day, every day. And then finally, they have the communication skills to do it really efficiently uh, because they can share information together. Whether or not they always use that information is another question, but it does make them really, really excellent pollinators, especially when you add in the fact that they live in structures that you can physically pick up and move and plop down into the middle of a crop field. So, Bees are, honeybees are great, all bees are important, but honeybees have gotten to become really, really, really vital to agriculture. And so I always like to talk as well, uh, and any talk that I do about honeybees, I wanna talk about what we can do to help the bees because they help us so much. So when we're talking about how can we help not just honeybees, but all bee species, there's a lot of simple things that you can do. You can plant native plants, provides bees with a source of food, and it gives you a pretty view, so it's a win-win. With those uh, landscapes, though, you don't want to use pesticides. You've probably heard that before, but pesticides are poisonous to bees, so you want to try to avoid the use of them if at all possible. You can support your local beekeepers. Maybe you don't want to have a hive yourself, but by financially supporting them by buying local honey, for example, you're allowing them the means to take care of and manage their own bees. Uh, and so that can help beekeepers with their livelihood and the bees uh, with their pollinating services. And then one that you might not think of is just to mow less often or to leave hedgerows around crop fields or gardens. And that's because a lot of times those uh, dandelions and clover and things that we would otherwise like mow over because they're weeds, those can be important sources of food for bees. And finally, um, these little things are helpful, but really legislation is the biggest key. So you can support things like the Saving America's Pollinators Act, which was introduced into the House of Representatives in March. And by supporting legislation, telling your Congress people that protection for pollinators, bees and otherwise is important, that could go a long way to preserving them, not just now, but in the future as well. So with that, uh, thank you all for listening. And um, 
I hope you like these as much as I do, because they're great. <laughs> <laughs>